everybody and welcome to today's Energy Academy episode on local flexibility. With more distributed generation on the UK grid like solar farms, onshore wind turbines, batteries and the like, as well as growth in electricity demand as the UK electrifies heating and transport in the move towards net zero, our electricity networks must adapt. Enabling local flexibility to help manage the peaks and troughs in demand and supply on existing distribution networks is key. A traditional power grid has a transmission system on which centralised large power stations provide the power, with that power flowing down to lower voltage distribution networks where the demand is. As we move towards a decentralised, decarbonised distributed power grid, a lot of the generation moves on to the local networks. At the same time, those local networks have to deal with increased demand at particular times of day as we also move away from oil and gas with electricity demand forecast to increase two to three times over the next 30 years. Therefore, local distribution networks will have more demand and supply to manage, and balancing this will be a challenge. This is a major reason for the transition from distribution network operators to distribution system operators, but you can find out more about that in our Energy Academy video on DNOs. Local flexibility will be required to enable local balancing of supply and demand, such as shifting away energy use from peak times. Peak electricity consumption will exceed the capacity of the networks in some areas which are particularly constrained, for example in the graph on screen. This shows a simulation of a section of the network with a 750 megawatt capacity limit. There's distribution connected solar and some onshore wind turbines. Demand is very high across the evening peak between 5 and 7 p.m. as domestic customers get home and plug in their electric vehicles. To stop the peak demand exceeding the available capacity, a source of local flexibility can be dispatched to reduce the peak demand to 750 megawatts. In this case, it's a battery, which charges up when demand is low, i.e. overnight. By calling on a local source of flexibility to shift the energy consumption away from peak times, network power constraints are respected, which means no transformers going bang. This also means costly and inconvenient network reinforcements aren't necessary, so nobody has to start digging up your local high street. The network is able to run safely and efficiently. Of course, to enable this kind of scenario, network operators must have visibility of their networks as well as have access to sources of flexibility that can be called upon. This means that data about the networks and markets for local flexibility are required. A huge program of digitalization is needed so that distribution network control rooms can access real-time data about their networks, as well as data on the flexible assets available to them at any given time. This is why the government set up an energy data task force, whose recommendations are now being put into practice. Markets for local flexibility are needed so that asset owners, operators and optimizers are able to sell the flexibility their assets offer to the distribution system operators, or DSOs. A number of initial tenders have run over the last few years in which the DSOs have procured location-specific sources of flexibility in areas where their networks are particularly constrained. New marketplaces for these flex tenders have been created. For example, Piclo Flex is a leading independent marketplace bringing together flex providers with system operators. Local markets for flexibility are still fairly immature, but as they develop, they are sure to become a key part of the revenue stack for energy storage. We're sure that one day soon, local markets will feature on the Modo leaderboard. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.